Hey friends, it's Molly with your best sexual self. And today I have something to talk to you about that uh, happened to me last week. So I have just finished reading Gary Chapman's The Five Love Languages. Um, I don't have a copy to show you because I lent it to a friend. But um, I read this years ago um, and just revisited it. And let me tell you, uh, 19 years into my relationship, I gained a lot more from it than I did 15, 20 years ago. So um, I'm not actually here to talk a whole lot about the book. I just want to tell you kind of this eureka moment I had while reading it. The premise of Chapman's book is that there are five basic love languages and that we all speak one of them as our primary love language. So the love languages include um, words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. And what happens, right, is that because there's five of them, the chances that you're gonna speak your partner's love language, I don't know, are probably like 20% or something, right? So what we naturally do is show our partner love in the way that we like to receive love. So for me, my primary love language is physical touch. And that means that a lot of times I'm going to try and use physical touch to show my partner that I love them. But if physical touch is not my partner's love language, they're not going to receive that touch as love. So what's that mean as far as relationships goes? So that's what creates the, he says I never tell him I love him, but I tell him I love him all the time. Um, the, she says we never spend quality time together, but man, we just binge watched Bridgington. I haven't watched Bridgington, but I hear it's good. Anyway, you get the picture, right? People are thinking that they're showing their partner love and their partner is saying that they're not receiving that love. And there's a, a breakdown in that communication. So the thing that really resonated with me was that Chapman talks about different ways to recognize your partner's love language. Now, of course, you can give them the book. There's a quiz at the back of the book. There's probably 150 quizzes online. But if you don't want to do that or your partner is not willing, you can still figure out their love language. So I'm reading Chapman's book. And the first thing that really hit me was to look at the things that your partner nags you about. So a secret about me. It's not a secret. I'm a really bad housekeeper. Um, just a bad housekeeper. Um, I don't make my bed most days. Um, and it kind of annoys my husband a little bit, right? I'm sure he wishes I was a better housekeeper. Um, but there's things that he definitely nags me about. My truck, um, I don't keep my vehicle clean. Um, I haul kids everywhere um, all the time. I'm hauling kids around. Um, my van, I used to haul my goat around when she was little, like used to take her everywhere. And if you know anything about goats, they um, shit wherever the fuck they want. Those are the things, like if he's gonna nag me about something, chances are it's gonna be about the clean laundry that is not put away or um, the bed that's not made or my dirty vehicle. So that kind of really resonated, like holy fuck. Holy fuck, what he always nags me about is the fact that I'm not doing those things, right? So those are acts of service, right? Keeping my vehicle clean, making sure dinner's done when he comes home from work, putting the laundry away, those are acts of service. Um, so like lights going off, like, holy shit, just realize this is going on. So that's the first thing. The second thing you can do um, when you don't know your partner's love language is that you can really examine the way that they love you. Look at it objectively, step back from your relationship and see what they do, how they express their love to you. Chances are that's their love language. So I step back and I look at my husband and holy fuck, does he not do acts of service for me all the time? Um, he gets my coffee. Like if we're sitting on the couch and he's getting up, he'll make me a cup of coffee. Um, 
I have issues in my thighs and he rubs my thighs almost every night before bed. Um, he'll rub my back before bed. He cooks, he makes me lunch. Um, so he's always doing these acts of service and I never fucking realized that's because that's his love language. Like, how dumb can you be, Ma? Like, that's his love language. So I was just sharing that with you today, right? Sometimes even when you're a relationship blogger, sometimes even when you've been together for 150 years, um, you can still learn about each other and you can still learn ways to make small, subtle changes in your relationship that can have huge influences. So that's it today. Um, maybe go check out Chapman's book because it's pretty damn good. And uh, I'll talk to you all later.